Hey everyone. So, yesterday I got a new tent in the post. Um, this is the Dan Durston or Durston Gear X Mid 1P. Uh, it's the V2. So, the 1P has been out for a while, the one person tent, um, and they have just released this V2, this updated version. Um, it was available for a very short period of time on the Caviso Outdoors website in the USA. Uh, I was lucky enough to get back home from working time to get logged on and just managed to secure one before they sold out. Um, the tent itself cost 240 US dollars. I then paid uh, 25 US dollars to get the expedited shipping, the air shipping, so that totals about £197, I'm in the UK obviously, uh, and then yesterday I was uh, in receipt of the tent after paying £72.53 pence in import charges. Um, I would just point out that I do work for Royal Mail as well, I'm a postman, um, and we don't get any special treatment with the import charges, <laughs> we we all still have to pay it, so altogether the tent, the import charges, everything, it was about £270 for me to get it here all in from the States. So what do you get? For that you get the inner and the outer tent obviously, uh, you get a little peg bag, you get four titanium uh, V pegs and two titanium shepherd stakes, you get this drawstring bag with everything in, and you also get a two year warranty, which I didn't realise. Um, I've never paid much attention to that kind of thing before with tents. I've only owned two real decent tents in the past. I don't know if warranties are a, a regular thing or not, but yeah, two year warranty with it. Um, weights and sizes wise, this package that you see here, that is everything inside there. It's a trekking pole tent, so there's no poles included with it. Um, so that is just the fabric in there, basically. Uh, that package weighs on my scales 874 grams. I'll put up on the screen somewhere how much that is in pounds and ounces. Um, and the dimensions of this, it's 27 centimetres long and the diameter is 15 centimetres. Now, as you can see, it's quite squishy. It will go down some more if you want to compact it down. Um, so yeah, I'm going to... Uh, Get it all unpacked and have a look see at what we have in here. It's a nice day today as well, so it's a nice decent day to get it up, get it put up for the first time. So one drawstring bag. The only other thing that was in the box that it came in was a quite a nice little dust and gear sticker, which everyone likes a sticker. So yeah, you've got your outer tent, peg bag, inner tent, which is, so it doesn't come attached, you'll have to attach it, um, does pitch fly first, so I get the fly up and then attach the inner, then you can leave them attached or untouch them if you want. I will say now that it is a mesh inner, so this that you can see here, uh, it's a full, yeah, there you go. So it's a full mesh inner there that you can see. Um, as far as I'm aware, they don't do like a semi-solid or a solid interior, which for the UK, I've got to admit, it would be quite nice. Um, Mr. Durston, if you are watching, uh, that might be something you would consider in the future, possibly. Maybe a semi-solid interior, a bit like the tarp tent ones, where you've kind of got the band of solid material around the bottom edge of the tent. Um, it just helps block out a bit of a bit of wind, a bit of the cooler temperatures we've got over here, and also the roof would be very nice um, to have solid, just to help with condensation a bit. We have more of a problem with that over here than you guys in the states, I believe. But anyway, yeah, I'm going to uh, get this set up and see what the whole thing is like. So there we go, we've got the outer pegged out, just one one stake at each corner, 
that's all you can see the workmanship there everything's double stitched everything's reinforced at the edges it's it's really good um, it is factory seam taped as well so you don't have to worry about that uh, the instructions for pitching I've never had a trekking pole tent before uh, so I've used a big Agnes copper spur and a tarp tent rainbow lee so this is my first trekking pole tent I've always wanted to try one to just to go just to ditch the poles you know that the tent poles you having to look around with your because any of the long distance hikes I do I've always got trekking poles with me anyway so it, it makes sense anyway yeah the instructions say to peg it out like this in a rectangle get everything as as close as you can to a 90 degree angle at the corners and then once you insert your trekking poles into these grommets one at each side uh, the actual fabric itself limits the trekking poles so there's there's no actual height set for the trekking pole once you insert it and you extend it as far as it will go that's what you use basically that's the setting you use there's no there's no guesswork involved there it's just put your pole in extend it till it's taut and then done so I'm going to do that and then we can start attaching the inner well there we go that was actually extremely simple <laughs> um, yeah it's it's gone up really easily I don't know if it's a, a fantastic pitch straight away but um, it's not taken long at all and just look how sturdy that is it's really really impressive You've got the nice logo on the sides there it's quite a low pitch as well which is which is quite good for weather resistance obviously I'm assuming you can pull it tighter obviously we'll be able to pull it a bit further down to the ground if you want to increase your weather resistance maybe let it up a bit if you want some more ventilation through there um, speaking of ventilation above each door there is a velcro vent if you can make that out there there is a, a strut in there and that will pop out and open the vent up so that's a nice feature uh, let's have a quick look inside before we put the interior on sorry trying to do that one handed it's not working there we go so you can see it is rather spacious inside um, these bungees I'm assuming are for the attaching the interior again you can get to the vents from the inside which is a very good point and then if you can make out the reinforcement where the trekking pole because the trekking poles go in tip up and handle down as you can see um, the reinforcement up there is some serious reinforcement that is top-notch work up there um, so like I say everything all the seams are taped it just feels like a really quality tent anyway let's get the interior put in and uh, see what it's like at that point I will just say that this is obviously a, a rectangle at the moment um, quite a decent rectangle the interior when you get it set up it's actually diagonal so your head will be at one corner and then it'll come down across here and your feet will be at the opposite diametrically opposite corner so your porches one porch is going to be over there and one porch is going to be here behind me well depending where I uh, put the interior so that is just something to bear in mind when you're pitching you don't have what you would call a normal kind of oblong tent floor it, it's 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 offset it's diagonal across the tent um, so that will show a lot better obviously when I get it uh, set in 
Okay, so I've got the inner clipped in. It's just a matter of attaching a few clips inside, um, and then there's a little grommet. If you can see it, I'll show you. A little grommet just to fix around the bottom of your trekking pole handle. Um, a little elastic strap just to tighten it all out. As you can see, they just fix on. Sorry, getting a bit windy. They just fix on there in the corner. You can fix them to the plastic rings, or you can fix it to the actual grow grain, if you like, whichever one you want. Um, so that is the full interior. There's also a buckle right up in the top where the where the trekking poles go in. Just clip in one buckle on each pole. Um, so that's it. That is that is the interior. Um, before we move into the interior, I'll just go around the exterior again. So with it being the the V2, the new and improved version, I, c I can't comment on the original because I never used it. I never saw one. Um, but this this version is 30% larger on the inside. Uh, at least that's what um, they claim on the website. And um, no no cause to dispute that. Um, that means on the interior it's 43 inches tall, 90 inches long and 32 inches wide. On the exterior the length length along the tent is 100 inches and the width at the ends 67 inches. Like I said before it is factory seam taped on the inside and the fly does have the, the good chunky number five YKK AquaGuard zips so a lot of the lightweight tents you get now they're skimp not skimping but they're using the lighter weight zips obviously to save weight um, that is a number five and that should be pretty durable uh, the actual tent body itself is made out of sil poly so sil nylon is like the basic sort of bog standard tent fabric that most people use, most manufacturers. So you can have sil nylon, then you can have DCF, which is the super light, kind of extremely strong, extremely tear resistant, um, lightweight version. And then sil poly, not many manufacturers are using it at the moment, but it's got some seriously good advantages. Um, this is a 20D polyester with a 2500 millimeter sill PEU coating. So it's it's got some serious waterproofness to it. Um, the advantage with sill poly over sill nylon is that it doesn't sag. So overnight when your tent's got a bit damp, you come out in the morning and your sill nylon tent, like the Big Agnes copper spur that I was using, that would be kind of all sagging because it was kind of damp and you would have to go around re-tighten everything up. Um, not with this, so it doesn't sag. Uh, it's also got high UV resistance and unlike Sil nylon that does absorb water, uh, sil poly doesn't, or it absorbs very, very little. So that is one of the reasons why it doesn't sag as much, because um, it's not absorbing as much water. So basically, water's just going to bead and run off most of it. So you're also going to have the benefit, similar to DCF, in the way that you're not going to be packing up a soaking wet through tent like you would with sil nylon. So that's the materials. Um, just a few more points. The tent does pitch with just four stakes, like I said, one at each corner. There is also, which I'm, I'm going to peg out actually, just at the side of the door there, just one little stake point. And then obviously you can attach the door stake onto that as well if you want. Um, we've also got extra staking points all along. Well, there's one in the middle of the door there. There is another one here at the edge on the on the end and then again you've got the same at this side another one in the middle. You also have points if you want to add guy lines to the side panels you can and then 
you've also got guy lines supplied on the apex um, which again are really well attached and really well reinforced uh, I'm not going to deploy them at the moment there's no need so I'll just stick this other little peg in the other door obviously that is a huge bonus as well having two doors two entrances two vestibules whether you're on your own or you've got uh, somebody with you it doesn't matter if it's a one or a two person tent it's always I find a lot nicer to have two doors you can then use one area for storage I mean that is quite a decent sized storage area as well um, one side for storage one side for getting in and out or cooking whatever um, but what I'm going to do I'm going to get a pack just so I can put it in one of the porches show you how much space there is then I'm going to get the um, sleeping mat sleeping pad inflate that pop it in so you can see how much space there is inside the tent as well okay so there we go got it set up got the door rolled up it does just secure with a little loop and toggle um, nice and simple nothing too finicky about that as you can see I've got the sleeping mat in now that is a Thermarest Neoware X Lite and it's the large version as well um, so that is slightly wider and slightly longer than your standard X Lite and just look at the space that there is at the end down there buckets of space so if you're a tall person if I bump that right down to the bottom so the the actual mat is touching the bottom now of the of the inner just look at how much space is up at the head there is a huge amount of space that is seriously good for a one person tent so you've got a good interior on this tent I think uh, it's a nice deep bathtub floor as well uh, and the zips it's two zips so easy access to both vestibules uh, there is a little pocket just at the top there you can make it out um, kind of like a little little triangular shape with an entry down one side both this, this ends closed off and then you've got exactly the same at this end as well above your head so you've got one at the head end and one kind of kind of in the middle of the tent but you do see what I mean now about it being on diagonal so you're kind of on diagonal living which there's nothing wrong with that whatsoever it's it's very good the, the poles as well don't obstruct your entry you've got you've got your pole there um, this little part of the door is pegged out now and then you've got this huge area that's just completely clear so when you are say, sat inside and you're, you're sat looking out or you're sat um, cooking whatever you've got once you've got the door tied back you've got a huge view huge view area with nothing no poles or anything like that sticking in there which is a real good point um, the pack I've got the pack put in the vestibule that's my old um, Osprey Exos 58 so it's not a small pack by any means and that vestibule just swallows it look at the space that's left there tons of it I've got it just just lent against the pearl slightly um, it is just slightly touching the outer but I mean you, you could probably even lay that down as well and it still wouldn't be still wouldn't be too too bad in the way so yeah it's had some use as the Exos <laughs> I don't use it much anymore uh, but yeah like I say there's a ton of space in there I'm just gonna close this and then just climb on in so I am bang on six feet tall so I'm just gonna nudge down there so that's me completely laid down now when I sit up so my feet are just to say they're touching the inner just but I mean how often do you lay with your feet like that 
We've got a decent amount of space in the corner and another decent amount of space there. Excuse me, a little. Not a great deal of space down the sides, but then again, when you've got that much at the ends, you don't really need it. And again, plenty of space at the ends. So, I don't know if you'll be able to catch that or not, but when I move my head up, I am not touching the tent whatsoever. Sorry for that gratuitous first shot. So yeah, not touching the interior at all. Um, I can hold my hand up. There's, there's basically a real bucket ton of room in here. I think it's definitely helped over the original. If this is 30% bigger than the original, I imagine the original was possibly a little bit of a tight squeeze, maybe. I don't like feeling like I'm sleeping in a, a coffin, basically. Um, otherwise I would have bought a tap tent notchly. <laughs> but, like I say, all the tents I've used, Big Agnes Copper Spur, that was a two-person, the HVUL2, and then the tap tent Rainbow Lee, that's a two-person as well. I mean, there's, there's a ton of room in them for a two-person, but this is, for a one-person, this is just fantastic, I think. This is, uh, this is the sweet spot for me, definitely. So as you can see, there's another little toggle there on the for the interior door. And then the zips. So the view, once you've got the zip undone, excuse me, and the door tied back, you've got a huge cavernous view there. Really good. And you have got a slight bit of cover from the door as well. So if it is raining slightly, you do still have a bit of cover. You could even do the door up slightly. Sorry, pull zip the door down slightly as such just to give you a bit more protection from any weather outside still have the door open I mean I've got the pack in there and I've still got room to if I wanted to to cook with the door open so very pleased very uh, very impressed Mr. Durston you've done a good job so if you've watched all the way to the end thank you very much I hope it's uh, helped you in some way shape or form um, it's the first time I've done anything like this, like a, a product video. It's not really a review, uh, more of an overview. But uh, yeah, thanks for sticking with it, and um, looking forward to getting this out on the uh, on the trail sometime. If you have any comments, uh, just uh, you know where to pop them in the section below. Any questions, I'll do my best to answer. Thanks very much, and uh, see you again. <laughs>